This video is brought to you by Squarespace. I feel like we can all mostly agree that this item no longer counts as a full-length mirror. This is the mirror I use in all of my sewing and cosplay videos to try things on and make sure that like mock-ups fit and stuff. And you have also probably progressively watched it get worse and worse. Now you might find yourself wondering, Kira, what did you do? Listen, I swear it wasn't me this time. I don't think it was me this time. The story goes like this. I was having one of my legendary Halloween parties, and for some reason, people like to go into my bedroom during these parties. Actually, I know the reason. I have a cool room, I get it. But I keep my door closed because I don't want you guys in my bedroom. It's kind of weird. Hey, stay out of there. As it happens, people ignore my wishes. They go in there so that they can see all of this stuff. And over the course of people going in and out of my bedroom all night, this mirror, which I kept behind my door at the time, got just busted into. That's where it got its first scar, which is down here, which consequently also broke the frame that was around this mirror, causing it to eventually just fall off completely. And then, I mean, there's no way this guy was gonna be safe from me. I can't live like this. I need a new mirror. But like, do I just want any mirror or do I want a whimsical mirror? Come on, you know the answer to that question. Pinterest has ruined my life. So friends, let's go to the thrift store, find a new mirror, and then go do some ridiculous stuff to it. Come on, gotta get down from the tree. Okay, come on. So this mirror is actually what I was looking for. I wasn't sure if it was still here, but it is. They're coming with me. Guess who bought too much stuff? This guy. Okay, let's go home and see what I can do to make this mirror just a little bit more interesting. Ladies and gentlefolk, we now have multiple mirrors. I have a brand new mirror that I can use to like try things on with and actually see the things that I'm making, which is pretty important. But that begs the question, what do I do with this mirror now? You guys probably know I don't like throwing away stuff, especially not stuff that I can put into my rat pile to later make things out of. So here is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking about for now, just leaving this mirror the way it is, you know, that way it's actually easy to move around places and see into. And then that mirror can be the mirror that I play around with and do ridiculous fantasy things too, because otherwise it's gonna just get thrown away. And I think that this would actually make a pretty nice decor item once I do all of my nonsense to it. I feel like having a decorative mirror on my closet door would be a nice addition to the space, so I'm gonna take a look at this, see what I can salvage. Things are gonna get a little wacky in the cave today. But first, this video is sponsored by Squarespace. Hi, do you ever look yourself in the mirror and think, wow, I'm an aspiring career artist and I still don't have an online portfolio? Well, what if I told you you could make one? effortlessly. Squarespace truly has everything you need to build a professional and personal online presence. You can choose from dozens of professional and customizable templates for both website and portfolios. You can customize everything from text to colors to personal branding to whatever individual website pages you could possibly need. And you can embed every type of media with image, video, audio, and social blocks. And you can do all this in just about an hour. I use them for my website. They meet all of my portfolio needs, like having separate portfolios for my illustrative and costuming work. They have ways to embed YouTube videos I'd like to highlight. And they have an e-commerce platform where I can sell my artwork and merchandise and I can also link that to a print-on-demand service so overproduction isn't an issue. Plus, after you launch your website, they have all the analytics tools you could possibly need so that you can see what content people are engaging with and market yourself in the most effective way. Finally, if you need help at any time, Squarespace has award-winning 24-hour customer support Support, so their team can assist you any time of the day or night. So if you want to be able to look yourself in the mirror and proudly say, yes, I do have a professional portfolio, this is a real job, mom, head to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash Alpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you as always, Squarespace, for all of that sponsorment. Now, let's get these bad boys inside. Come on. See what I mean? Allow me to slip into something a little bit more comfortable. 
Okay, that's better. It's another day. You can tell it's gonna be a good day because I'm wearing my 18th century wrapping gown. And I've been using the time since we last spoke to figure out exactly how I'm going to repair this mirror prior to doing ridiculous things to it. This is my genius plan. So as someone who has been a foam-based cosplayer for so many years, one of the things I have lying around in excess is these giant sheets of EVA foam, which I don't use for cosplay as much anymore. So what I'm thinking for the plan is to basically just cut some sheets of EVA EVA foam to size and then use that as the new backing for the mirror and then just glue those on with all of the cracks and cuts still intact. And then I can make like this example and use all of the preserved moss that I have to kind of like make it look like moss is growing out of those cracks. Basically a lot of this is so that I don't have to throw any glass out because not only is that dangerous for the people who are holding your trash, trash away, I also just don't want all of these glass shards in a landfill somewhere where they can be in my room, making my room look like it's in a future where a fungus has completely taken over. I want my room to look like that. <laughs> Here is our very puzzle piece scrap foam base. Next, I'm just going to glue these two pieces together with some barge cement, and then I can get to the fun part. I know it's not the most to look at, but the base is done. It's now got some structural integrity to it, which is great. And I also glued a few spare pieces that are gonna help us out in a little bit here. And then the other thing I went in and did was I do want this to hang from my closet door. So I added a bunch of warbler around the top of the frame and then also added a little hook here so that it can hang nicely. It should be <laughs> pretty structurally sound, at least I hope so far so good. And then the last thing I did was just go in around the edges and to any of the sharp parts and just add a little hot glue so that I don't have any risk of cutting myself whenever I'm sculpting around this and adding all of the details. So next we're getting into the fun part. I'm going to take just a bunch of foam clay and then sculpt all around the edges and then add some like wooden texture to that. That way I also have something to glue all of the other pieces that I'm going to make on top of. You're going to see all of those fun fancy pieces in just a little bit. I've already made most of them. I have to leave to go somewhere in just about an hour so let's go do that. Okay, so obviously, if I can make something glow, I would like to make that thing glow. During the whole sculpting process, I accidentally discovered this TikTok from Cottage and Coven with a far simpler bioluminescent mushroom method than what I have been seeing. Before, I had seen people using silicone and resin, and I just didn't feel like doing all that. So with my newfound crafting power, I also installed some strings of LEDs so that I could add some glowing mushrooms later on. And on that note, I also sculpted some shelf fungi directly onto the frame for similarly moth brain purposes. You know, because nothing says whimsy quite quite like a bunch of candles in the middle of the woods. So the first thing that I did the next day is take my wood burning tool and add some wooden texture to the frame of the mirror. I am really glad that I took the extra time to go in and do this step because I have to admit, the sculpt after it dried definitely wasn't really looking like anything. It definitely looked fantasy in like a Skyrim blood pact, you're gonna get sacrificed kind of way. Just kind of like black ooze framing the mirror, <laughs> which is not really the look that I was going for. So I know I add this wood texture to basically everything I make these days, but I think it really brought them mirror looking from like an occult place to more of a whimsical foresty place which is what we're going for so with that i'm very excited because now we are on to paint and i actually remembered to buy spray paint this week i'm also very excited about that because i don't feel like taking a million years on this yay i know that i need to just get an airbrush don't worry it's a purchase that's on the list for very soon i kind of need to buy a new sewing machine first because 
I don't have one that works right now. If you have airbrush recommendations, I would very much like to hear them because I also don't know what kind to get. I'm a little lost. I do really want one. I think it would improve my situation significantly. <gasps> Cooperate. I actually just realized it's really nice outside, so I don't know why I'm about to film this in my garage. I should probably show you guys how I made these. I pre-make these in a lot of these videos because obviously there's just so much here. I'm not gonna make all of these on camera. But I basically have three or four main varieties and I'm gonna show you guys how I make each one because it is so stupidly easy. So the main ones that I actually make are ones that look like the chicken of the woods, like as in the last of us, one that looks like a turkey tail mushroom. This guy that also looks like the chicken of the woods, it's just a bunch of these stacked on top of each other. And then we have some classic mushrooms that are kind of supposed to look like the red ones that you see everywhere. We have a small boy, a medium boy, and a long boy. Let's begin with the small boy. I prefer the gray or white foam clay for this because the black foam clay is better for sculptural things. It's just a little bit stickier and a little bit more sculptable. This is denser. I like it for these mushrooms. It's just got more of like a putty texture to it, which means that it doesn't stick to your hand as much. So I literally just roll a little ball out. I flatten and shape it a little bit. And then I basically only ever use this end of the sculpting tool for any of these. You could even use like a knee or an end of a safety pin. I add the texture that's underneath the mushroom, like so. Sometimes I also texture the top. I just poke it a little bit. It's so easy. Then you take another little bit. You roll out the stem size to whatever you want. I want a tiny little stubby stem. You make it kind of look like this. You flatten out the end and then you boop, put it on your little mushroom. Then I connect it by kind of blending it into the other texture that's on the bottom, like so. Can also add some texture to the stem itself. This particular kind of foam clay takes texture really well and it just dries looking nice. It's so effortless, I love it. And there you go, that's it. You have a mushroom now, wow. Mother Earth has some competition. You can add a little bit more realism by making the top of the mushroom a little bit messed up, a little bit floppier. I love doing this, it adds a lot of character. If you want a long boy, you do the exact same thing. You just make the stem longer. Look at that, it's that easy. Pinch the end, you do the exact same thing. Look at that. This took me literally less than a minute to make. I know that because I was recording the entire time. We already have two mushrooms with almost no effort exerted. I love this. Okay, the ones that are the shelf fungi are probably my favorite out of the ones that I make because it's so easy. You literally just, you make a little pancake and you flatten it. Like a Looney Tunes character that's just had an anvil dropped on them. You just flatten it out. And then I normally like to maybe fold in the edge, give it a little bit more shape. You don't have to worry about what the bottom looks like. No one's gonna see that. And then you just take it in your hand like this and then you take a sharp object and then you just do this. I like to go inward so that you get this little ridged pattern on the outside. It looks more like a chicken of the woods or a turkey tail mushroom pattern. Sometimes it's even faster if you do this on a flat surface. I also like this. Mess up the edges a little bit, makes it look more realistic, more organic. And then I also like to just go like this. And bam, that's it. That's all you have to do. Again, no one, shh, no one has to look at that. This is the mushroom that took all of like 20 seconds to make. Look at that. And if you want more of a turkey tail mushroom look, you can add these little ridges on it. Way whenever you paint it, the striping and the banding is actually worked into the physical design of the mushroom. Wow, look at that. You can make a bunch of big ones and glue them to your face and become a clicker from The Last of Us. Um, I fully intend to do that at some point. I will say, whenever your little guys are drying, you do want to be careful about what position you put them in. See, if this guy's got a long stem, this is going to flop over. It's going to get flaccid. And I apologize for using that word, but 
I mean, I'm not wrong. So if you have a little guy that has a long stem like this, you might find it in your best interest. Just prop him up next to something. Give him a little bit of emotional support. He needs it. I don't find that I have as much trouble with these ones drying, but never hurts. Again, if you want to do this, I find best results with the gray or white foam clay. I find that this is pretty consistent throughout different brands. I've used all different brands. I mainly just included this segment in the video just to show how doable making something like this is. Like you really can just get a little $13 tub of foam clay. And that's most of the money that you need to spend if you already have something that you want to customize and make look just a little bit more magical. You grab that, you grab some paint, and then you have relatively inexpensive craft time, which I am all here for. All right, thank you for coming to my mushroom TED talk. Let's see how that paint is doing. All right, it looks like everything is finally dry, so. Okay, let's go. Before painting the frame of the mirror, I quickly reinstalled the LEDs and covered them in copious amounts of hot glue to hide the bulbs, and then attached these little mushroom caps to the tops. I made these by using the aforementioned cottage and coven method, dolloping a little bit of hot glue on a heat-resistant surface, and then I also added some hot glue texture to the bottom to make them look a little bit more realistic. It's again, so simple and yet so effective. I showed the glowy mushrooms to my brother after I finished it, and he was like, oh no, this is too much power, everything you own is going to look like this now, and I mean, he's not wrong. And Finally, after that, it was on to another task that makes my brain very happy, painting the frame to look like wood. This is a long and satisfying process of dry brushing and dry brushing and even more dry brushing, but I feel like the end result is always so worth it. Apparently, I just really like my furniture to look like either stock Skyrim items or things that Radagast would have in his home. Hello. This is kind of a weird angle, but okay, yeah, weird angle. Anyways, painting is completely done now, and it came out looking very, very nice. I'm so satisfied with it. I mean, it looks like wood. Look at how woody it looks. So after painting, I just quickly went in and I gave it like a satin clear coat, which actually ended up being really nice. I normally work with gloss, but satin gives it a much nicer finish where it looks like finished wood. It still has like enough of a shine to give the piece depth. So final step is just to glue all this stuff onto here. I love this step. This also takes forever, and it's midnight, so I should probably get started. <laughs> but first, most satisfying step of this entire process. We're done. Now you might be looking at this so far thinking, wow, that's a lot. You're a hundred percent right. But I also, I like it. This is what I think looks good. Just generally a lot. Could I have shown just a little bit more restraint and tact and taste? You know, probably, but I'm happy with this. 
I think that this is going to look lovely in my home. It is literally so late that I can no longer think, so I'm going to give you guys a closer look at this beautiful monstrosity with the reveal. And I'm sorry if that sounded weird. I can't tell how it sounds, because I can't think. Let's take a look. so much for watching this weird mirror video. I actually love the end result so much. I think it brings me one step closer to my final form, which is obviously just residing in an overgrown forest. So if you want to see more projects like this, definitely stay tuned. I already have at least another one on the way, and I'm very excited about that. Some of you might have a guess as to what it is. But as always, a massive thank you for this video goes to all of my wonderful patrons, especially my executive producers. Everybody say thank you, producers. Freedom and Gus Gus. Francesca Sliwa. Small Creek. Meg Lynch, Cat, Dodo, Zyl S, Shay Lee, Gray, The Cat's Bark, Alwyn Hayes, Thea Maia, Ruled by Pluto, Agent Sketchy, Wolven Underscore Arts, Corvid Dome, Lovisa, Eloquent Silence, In the Galaxy, Eno Sign, Meeks Hunter, Megan Penland, India Gloom, Hypnos, Reflings, Katie, Michael Twycross, Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, Bobo McFoe, Will Schmidt, and Bean the Bread. If you would like to become a patron and gain access to exclusive behind the scenes content on my videos, the link will be in the description. Also, I realize the executive producer didn't sneak her way into this video at all, which is obviously a crime, so here she is looking for bugs. Okay, bye!